All right, uh, let's get the show on the road. So my name is Eric Bosch, I'm, product ma I'm Director of Product Management at Humanware, and I'm very pleased that, uh, to present to you this afternoon a good webinar about books. Uh, so the title says it all, books, books, and more books. I'm going to let you guess what we're going to be talking about. And with me, we have a very good panel, uh, panelists, a uh, team of panelists. Uh, we have uh, Jim Sullivan from APH. We have Nali uh, Reom, uh, which is the product manager for Low Vision at Humanware. And with us, a special guest from Benetech, Emily Nostro. So welcome to all. Uh, I'm very pleased that you guys chose this webinar to attend to because I know there's a lot of competition out there since the COVID situation and everybody's working at home. So I have a little slide here with a couple of uh, learning objectives. So demonstrate how to use a Prodigy Books application. Demonstrate how to search and read books using the Prodigy Books application. Identify at least one way of sharing a book to a student using Bookshare and the books application. Identify at least one way to convert a document to PDF and to import it into Prodigy so that, that your students can work with. Uh, so without any more delays, I'm gonna pass the torch to Emily, which is gonna talk a bit about Bookshare. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and it's gonna be all yours, Emily. All right, hi everyone. Um... I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. This is what it looks like if you are logging in as an organizational member as a teacher. So Bookshare is an online accessible library. We have about 800,000 We get them directly from publishers um, who will send us the EPUBs the same day that they send them over to the Kindle store. And we also um, manually process quite a few um, quite a few titles. Anything that your student needs for school, um, you can place a request and we will go ahead and process that for you. Um, so Bookshare is free for all U.S. students in the United, or all students in the United States with a qualifying print disability. Anyone with a visual impairment um, who you are serving qualifies, so you can go ahead and sign them up. Um, we offer five different formats. Um, we offer audio, we offer braille, we offer daisy. Um, we offer the Word document, um, audio braille, Daisy Word document, we offer the EPUB, and we also have a really easy um, web-based reading platform that's called WebReader, um, which is very simple. All you have to do is click Read Now. Um, so there's three different types of memberships. We've got our organizational membership, um, which is school-based. It's totally free. Um, students can also get an individual membership. They can combine that with um, their organizational membership. And we really highly recommend the individual membership for middle and high school students because it allows them access to search the library. So if your student is independently researching or really likes to read, that's a great option. Um, and if you have any students who are not in a U.S. school or, you know, they've graduated, they're not continuing on education, they can sign up with an individual membership and that's $50 a year. Um, so when you are logging into Bookshare um, as a teacher, this is what it looks like. You add your, your students are called members. So your students are gonna be right over here in this members area. So you've got these two, I have two students on here. And to give them access to books, all you have to do is search by the title, author, or ISBN. You can also do more advanced searching through here, which allows you to search by category, grade level, and even language. So if you have a student who is an English language mm -hmm. learner on top of having a print disability, um, you can find books that work for them. So I'm gonna go ahead and I see someone has raised their hand. Um, and if you have- So do you want, you want me to uh, allow, allow him to talk or her to talk? Um, let me go ahead and assign a book and then we can, or and maybe Sarah will put her question in the chat um, so I can answer it. Oh, that was a mistake. All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go ahead and search for a science fiction novel, and I'm going to give it to, I'm going to assign it to the student. Um, so I'm searching for Binti. It's a short little novella. Um, I'm going to look at Binti one. So I just typed in the title up here. I could have also typed in the author, or I could have typed in the ISBN. And for those of you guys who um, maybe aren't familiar with um, ISBN, that is the, um, 
product identifier code for all books. So if you are looking at a book like I have this one right here, um, you'll have an ISBN. It starts with a 978. And so if you're looking for textbooks or things like that, um, highly recommend that you go ahead and search by ISBN so that you get the right edition. Um, but in order to assign a book to a student, the only thing you have to do is click the assign book and choose the student that you want. If you had a whole roster on here and you wanted to give it to all your 11th graders, you could filter that way. Now, as teachers, you cannot, um, you cannot download the books. So I always recommend creating a fake student so that you can demo what it's like um, to log in as a student um, and see that reading experience. Um, so I'm just gonna go quickly over here. Now, if you wanna add more members, which are your students, you click right here in the members area on the sidebar of, the, of your My Bookshare page. And there's a little person at the top that says add member and then you fill out all of their identifying details and their disability. The student does not need to have an IEP or a 504. Um, down here, if you are downloading Braille files, you can adjust um, the different BRF format. So you can do UEB mm -hmm. or eBay, grade one or grade two. Um, you can also change their default download format. So if you know that they're always downloading in Word, you can set that right there. So, um, if you want to add other teachers, so if you think that other teachers would be great for this, you can go ahead and add them individually. You need to put in their first, last name, title, email, give them a password and a phone number. And for all of your students and your teachers, if you're creating, some, creating users or an account for them, go ahead and take down the um, username and password um, so that you can help troubleshoot any login. If you want to do a mass upload, um, you go to upload roster. There is a new member and sponsor roster template. Um, so if you want to add everyone into your, from your district on here, you can download this form, fill out the members, fill out the sponsors, and upload it. It takes about two to four days, just so we ensure that you are not a bot. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and upload or log out and log back in as a student. And forgive me for one moment. Am I sharing my, I'm sharing my screen, correct? Everyone can see it? Yes, you are. Hold on, let me stop my share for just one moment and log in, because I believe it's gonna show my <laughs> passwords. Let me share my screen again. So when your student logs in, it's going to look like this. They're going to go over to the My Bookshare area. And so any of their assigned books are going to pop up over here under assigned books. So I've assigned two books to this student. Um, and they can go ahead and download in whatever format they want. Or they can click on Read Now. And when they do that, it's going to open up the web reader, which is text to speech. It has customizable settings. You can change the font. You can change. Um, the color contrast, you can change. There's a lot of customization to that. Um, I'll just pop over here so you can see what a book would look like. Very easy to use if the student is using a PC. And every time they come in, um, their preferences are saved. So all they have to do to start reading is click play. Most of the books have a table of contents that will display and you can jump around from the different to different chapters. Now, in the sake of time, I'm not going to press play. Um, the other um, the other thing that you can also do is you can assign reading lists to students, and so this allows you to up or either one create a reading list with all the books that you are using in your classroom, or you can go through our curated reading lists, which are you can find them all on the browse page. So we have 566 special collections. These are all pre-curated reading lists. So if you want your students to have all the New York Times children's bestsellers, all you have to do is open up this and you would click subscribe. Now, since I'm logged in as a student, they cannot subscribe on their own. Um, but it's a little tilted Wi-Fi symbol. 
um, and it'll say subscribe, you just click that, and then they'll have access to all those books. Now what's really nice about that is I'll come back over here into my Bookshare. Now the student is subscribed to two different reading lists. We've got the Lexile Collection and the Sunshine State Young Readers Award. And so this allows them to have 150, you know, a ton of titles just easily accessible. And so they can select what reading that they want. Um, we have a ton of different leveled reader collections, um, textbook collections, um, and if you have any, any suggestions, we are more than welcome to hear them. Um, award winners. Now the final thing that I will show you is just a how to request a book. So if you are searching for a very specific book and there are 800,000 titles, you cannot find it, come over here into the advanced search and click request to add a book. Now, let me log in as a teacher because students cannot do it, only teachers can. So you come over here and do the request to add a book. You'd wanna remark that it's required for school even if it's recreational reading for them and put the title, ISBN, author, publisher, copyright year. Now, if it's for a textbook that you need starting in fall semester, it's really important for us to know that because it helps us fast track it. Um, and if you are requesting something that is available in the NIMAC, it's also helpful to put that in here. Um, so that's just another, another way. So if you guys have any questions, you can let me know in the chat or in the q and I'm gonna stop my share. Um, yeah. So I guess up to now, there's no, there's no question. It was very, very clear. <laughs> All right, fantastic. It, it could, it, we, we could have some more questions uh, uh, during the, the webinar, but uh, thank you very much, uh, Emily. So that, uh, now we have a good uh, knowledge of Bookshare. Uh, we know how to um, create a reading list, create members in your organization, uh, how to share a book, how to share a reading list to a, uh, somebody in your organization, and how to read, how, how to read that book uh, through the web browser application. So that, that was awesome. Uh, and I'm going to show you another way to read those books as a student. And to do that, uh, you need your Mad Connect. Uh, so what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to share my screen also, and I'm going to show you my teacher's uh, view of my reading list. Okay, oops, what did I do there? So I think you can see my, my screen, right? Yes, all right, good. So um, like uh, Emily was talking about, when you, when you log into as a teacher, uh, you can, um, this is what you're gonna see. So right now, these are the books that I've uh, recently searched or assigned to a student. I can add a student, uh, uh, I can, uh, I, you, you can get you can get books you can find books uh, for students uh, so on okay so i'm going to slow down here on the left hand side of the screen there is a couple of things you can do on bookshare so uh, so you can do the history you can maybe take a look at your reading list so if i click on the reading list i have already one reading list that i have already created by clicking on that reading list are you guys seeing this or is it updating on the um, on the no, screen? Not. I'm not, huh? Let's start again. All right, so I think that's better. So um, sorry about that. Um, it happens, uh, technology sometimes, you can't control everything from technology, but there's always a way to find your way out of these little, little things that happen. I'm pretty sure you had the experience. Uh, so right now, like I said, I'm in my reading list. I already have a reading list. I have three books assigned to this reading list. Um, and if I, if I, if I'd like to assign this book to a, a student, I just click that little assign button, which is on, on the right-hand side of that table. And I can see all my, my students or my, the people that I have in my organization. And right now, 
I, I can share this book with student one, okay? I can also search for other books and add this to my reading list. So what's gonna happen is that my student, if my student has a Mad Connect, I will share now my Mad Connect and that student can use uh, my student one account that I created for him in Bookshare. So this is my Mad Connect. Uh, that, that you can see on the screen. And I'm in the Prodigy software. So by swiping to uh, the left of the uh, carousel and going towards the left, I think is the second last uh, icon, you will have an icon called Books. And this is the Books application in the, uh, in the uh, Prodigy software. If I click on that, there are several things you can do in that application. So the first one on the top is your library. So each, each book, that's gonna be downloaded will be stored in here in, in your library. If you're not logged in and you tap on any of these options, you're gonna be popped up with uh, your credentials. So this is where you enter the credentials of the students. Uh, right now I'm already logged in as my student one. And uh, we know that from what I should just showed you, I had a book uh, that was called Harry. So if I do, um, I'm gonna search by title Harry. And by searching by title, it's gonna give me usually, if I have access to all the books in the library, it's gonna give me all the books with the word Harry in the title. But in my case, since a student only has one book shared to him by the name of Harry, I'm only gonna see that book. And that's very useful because then you're, you're giving the right information to the student and that student is gonna read the right book that has Harry. So by clicking on the Harry uh, title, uh, it's going to bring you to a synopsis where you have the detail of the book so the student can read the details of the book, the synopsis, and then you can download that book by clicking on the third icon or the third button from the left on the button banner, which is kind of like a big arrow going down. So you can tap on that and it's going to download the book and it's going to download it and store it into my library. So if I go back to my main menu of my books application by clicking the, the arrow on the top left corner, and go into my library, I will see that I have now in my library, Harry. If I tap on Harry, it's gonna download, I, I'm gonna be able to start reading that book. If I want to, to switch pages, I wanna, I wanna go forward in the book, backwards in the book, you use the swipe gesture. So just like flipping pages in a real book. So if I go from right to left, I go forward in the book. So this is new in the, in the books application, starting from Prodigy 4.3. Uh, we, we're showing now images in our display. By default, it will be set to display images when you're zoomed out. And once you start reading the book, it's gonna fall into a column mode. And the column mode is really a straight column, it says it, and you're gonna go up and down, but not from left to right, right to left. So that's very useful uh, to keep the student attracted or not distracted from the reading of the book. Right now, since I did a webinar this morning, mine, I have set my reading mode to something else. So I'm just gonna show you that before starting reading. If you tap, there's a button banner at the bottom. If you tap on the second button from the left, that will bring you to the settings. And then you scroll down the options and you have a reading mode. You have three different reading modes that are available to you or to the student. You have a page mode, a column mode, and a line mode. The page mode will keep all the images and will keep the same file or the same uh, page format that, uh, that you have while reading. So you see all the images. If you choose a column, like I said, it's gonna be just a column. It's not gonna move from left to side to side. Uh, and then the line mode will be a straight line and that's very useful. So you can zoom in very large and have one word at the screen. So it all depends on what your student would like to use. So in my case, let's, uh, uh, let's select page because I wanna see the images. And I'm gonna go back to my book and I'm gonna swipe as I swipe. And then let's say I wanna start reading the book at chapter one. Well, I'm gonna use the button banner at the bottom here and I'm gonna tap on the last button to my right, which is a table of contents. And that's gonna bring me to my table of contents. I can scroll, so I can scroll to chapter one, tap on the chapter one. It's gonna bring me to the chapter one. If I start 
reading right now by pressing the play button, which is again on my button banner, it's going to start from chapter one, the first word on the top. But there's also another way of starting reading is to use one finger and press and hold on the word that you would like to start reading. And it's going to start reading at that word. So I'm going to increase the volume here. So you can hear, I can zoom in, can zoom out while I'm reading. I can stop by pressing the play pause button or I can press and hold on the screen to stop the reading, okay? So right now I have my reading out loud and that's another setting that you can set in the books application. Again, in the settings menu, I can go in, select the speech option and right now I am in the documents only. So it's only gonna voice or it's only gonna voice out loud the documents that I'm reading. It's not gonna voice any uh, menus that I have on the screen. If I choose on, that's where it's gonna voice the menus also as at the same time as the documents. But if I choose off, then I won't have anything that's gonna be read out loud. My preference is turning it off because then you can have your student reading by himself or by herself. And, and you can see if she or he understands the story instead of having the device reading it. It all depends on the preference and how, how you teach the lesson, but that would be my preference to turn it off to see if the student is able to follow and understand what he or she is reading. So if I have uh, turned off the, um, the speech, it will just not verbalize what uh, is reading. You can increase the speed of the reading by swiping again from left to right or left to uh, right, right to left or left to right. That's going to increase the speed of the reading or decrease the reading. Okay. I can pause again by pressing and holding on the screen. Eric, we have a question on the voice. Uh, somebody's asking uh, if we can have a lady's voice. Maybe you can show how we change uh, from a lady's voice to a man's voice. Absolutely. Uh, in the Mad Connect, you can have a choice of two voices, two languages, two voices. You can have two English voices if you want, uh, but you can have also a Spanish voice and a, uh, an English voice. And when you have two of these installed on the Mad Connect, usually it comes with, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Heather and Ryan by default in the US. Uh, you can go into settings, again, the second button from the left. And on here, if you scroll the options, you will, uh, you see, I don't have it. You would have a voice option because I don't have it installed. I don't have two voices installed, but you would have voices installed. You would have voices in those options. So let me show you a nice trick if ever you're inside a book you're reading and you want to go really quickly to your main menu use two finger and double tap on the screen i'm going to double tap and you're back to the main menu very quickly so what i'm going to do i'm going to show you how to install a voice that you'd like so you're going to go into settings user interface system language and in here, as you can see, I only have one voice installed. You, have, you can have a maximum of two voices installed. So to install one, I'm gonna go into configuration and I can choose another English voice. Um, so I had Heather, let's try Ryan from the United States. So I'm gonna use that little paper airplane on the top right. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna download the voice and install it uh, on your Mad Connect. Is there any uh, other questions, uh, Natalie? Not so far, your events are everything. Good. So I'm going to wait here. It's almost finished. It's going to install the voice and it's going to, we're going to go back to our, to our book reading. We can say that if somebody speaks more than one language, they can have one voice in English uh, installed and a voice in another language installed, like yep. English and Spanish. Yep. Perfect. So if I'm going to go back to my settings, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to see if everything went well. See, now I have two voices. The one with the checkbox, that's the one I've selected as my main voice. So if we go back to my books application, Oh. 
going to start again my Harry book. I was on chapter one. If I go into settings, I should have now option not even. Uh, okay. Oh, I know why. Because I'm, I turned my speech off. Since my speech is off, I don't need any voices. So that's why I don't have any voices. So I'm going to turn my speech on, documents only. Settings. Now I have an option of voice, as you can see here, which is the third option in the settings. Voice, I tap on it, it's going to change to Ryan. Let's hear Ryan. I can speed up. I can slow down by swiping on the screen. And then I can pause in my, my reading. Press the pause play button. Okay. And like Nile said, you can have a, um, an, a Spanish voice and you can have Spanish books. And Emily, correct me if I'm wrong, there's a big library of Spanish books also in Bookshare. Yes, we have about 18,000 Spanish language books. So you can read Spanish. You can scan also Spanish. If I have a, a paper book in Spanish, I can use my magnifier on my Mac Connect, scan that and have the, uh, the, the page read out to me in Spanish. I can have the whole system in Spanish if I want to also. Okay, and on my button banner, what I have here, uh, there's, a, there's a button minus and a button plus, that's to zoom in. So you can press and hold on those buttons and you're gonna zoom in gradually or zoom out gradually. We went through the, the uh, table of contents. In the settings menu, uh, you can play around in the settings menu, but the first option at the top is your color contrast. So you can change the color that you like the, the font to be uh, uh, displayed. So I can choose, for example, the white on black instead of the uh, black on white, which is the default, and it's gonna change that for me. And uh, you, can, you can really um, maximize the uh, settings for your student. And uh, once it's done, usually in the settings, you don't really go in the settings, it's done. And we keep that, um, you, keep, you keep those settings for, for almost for one, when you're in school. Um, if I go back to my main menu, I'm gonna go through these, uh, these options here that I have in the books application. So like I said, the, the, my library is where all the books that I've downloaded are gonna be stored. And what's really nice, I can, I can undock my tablet uh, from the stand, if I stop sharing here, but and then I'm going to show you my tablet I have in my hands, and I can just go and start my Prodigy, and then I can go into my books, go into my library, and have access to my books, uh, and then I can go sit on a sofa somewhere just with my tablet uh, in my hands, very comfortably read my book or have my book read out loud to me. So I don't need to be on the stand. I don't need to be sitting at a desk in order to, uh, to enjoy the book that I, I just downloaded. So I'm gonna go back here to my screen share. And back to Prodigy. Back to books. Okay, so I have my library. The, the, so you can search books by different, uh, different manners. Uh, you can search by title, you can search by author. You can search by category. Um, so this uh, there's full of categories here that are available that uh, Bookshare offers and you can search by category. You can select your category by content. If you don't know the full, um, the full title or the full uh, um, description of the book, you, you can search by that. Or you can search by ISBN, which Emily um, just uh, mentioned what an ISBN is. It's really an identifier for, for your book. Uh, for a student, when you search by ISBN, you really have to be sure that you enter the right ISBN that you shared with the student, or else uh, the student will not see that book. Uh, it will be filtered out. Okay. So there's different ways of reading books. So this is one way using the books application. There's also another way. Uh, let's say you have a PDF book that you have already downloaded um, from the internet or you bought somewhere else or you, you have it in hands, you have it on the USB stick or, or in your Google Drive. Well, you can import those PDFs inside your gallery. 
Okay, and this is what I'd like to show you also, because this is another way of reading books. Um, for example, let's say I have a book in my Google, uh, my Google Drive. In the APH Mat Connect, you have the APH icon right here. So if you tap on that, really the APH toolbox is is a pre-install. Uh, there's there's about a dozen of pre-install applications that are on here, and if you want to add some applications on here, you go into settings on the top right corner, choose application, and I'm gonna add, because it's not there, I'm gonna add uh, Chrome, and I will add Google Drive, which is under Google. I'm gonna add Google Drive, and as you can see, there's a little checkbox that appears there, and then when I go back to my list, those two applications will be added to my list. Okay, so they're going to be on the top here. You can also uh, manage the rank or the priority or the order of that list um, that, that, that you want. You don't have to have them on the top there. You can put it lower in, in the list. But why I want to use Google Drive, because a lot of people now or a lot of teachers are using a Google Classroom. And Google Classroom works with Google Drive. So you can share a lot of information, your books, your, um, your, your worksheets, uh, your exams, all through your Google Drive and then your student can share that back to the Google Drive and then have them access the Google, uh, the Google Classroom. So I'm going to go and start my Google Drive and this is my personal Google Drive and I have a couple of PDFs here which uh, I'm going to uh, I want to, let's say, uh, I have my gestures, which I'm going to show you later, but I like having my gestures activated in Android so I can triple tap on the screen and it really magnifies uh, when you're not using Prodigy, it magnifies what, you're, what you have on the screen. And right here, this is, this is the book that I'd like to import, uh, the po2.pdf. There's three little dots on the right-hand side of that book. I'm going to tap on that. And then there's going to be a pop-up that's going to appear. I don't see it on the screen because I'm magnified. I can magnify out by triple tapping on the screen, or I can pan using two fingers and just pan on the screen. And I'm going to pan to my menu here so I can see what's written in my menu here. Okay. And then I can go down the list. And down the list here, there's um, open with. I'm going to select that. And there's going to be a pop-up again. And the first one is going to be Prodigy. So you can select Prodigy and then right away select Always because the next time you're going to do that, it's going to open up right away in the uh, Prodigy software. So I'm going to, I'm just going to select choose once because I use this tablet to do webinars and to explain this. So I'm, I'm just going to choose one. So what's going to happen is that once I do that, it's going to take that PDF, convert it into the format that I need in Prodigy uh, to read it out. Okay. Once it's done, it's going to be in a manner where it's really simple to go from page to page and start reading and maybe modifying and things like that and then sharing that information. There we go. So we, this is what it did. It imported everything into my gallery in under PO2. So if I tap on that, so it's a, a book of nine. It's a small, it's a short story. There's nine pages to it. Um, so let's say, for example, you have a book of 100 or so pages, and you, you'd like to ask the student to start reading at page number 90, let's say. Well, there's a little option here. You go on the top left, uh, right corner, settings, go to, and then you can read the number of that page. So let's go to page seven in my case here, tap enter, and then brought to that page. And I can start reading. I can tap on that. I can start reading anywhere in the page. It kept my, it kept my white on black color scheme. And then I can press and hold on prompted word. And it's going to start reading again for me. I can pause it by pressing and holding or doing the, press, the uh, tap on the play pause button. And again, you got that same button banner at the bottom. Uh, I can take notes on my book by pressing that little pencil. And then I, I can write some notes on my book, on the side of the book. I can maybe highlight if I'd like to in the book. So let's say I want to highlight Inquisition. I, I can change that size also if I want. And then once I go back to my gallery, it's going to be all saved. And go back to my gallery. And I'd like to share that file or that 
page to my teacher or to a colleague, I press and hold on that page and it's gonna ask me to do a couple of actions here. So these actions, what I have as an option, I can share the document, I can delete, I can replace, I can run the OCR if it's not well done, I can insert a page or I can export. So the export, you can export that to your tablet, you can export that to a USB key, but you can also use share as a PDF or a JPEG or a text, but here we're gonna use PDF. And when you do that, it's gonna look through all, all the applications that are installed on the tablet and it's gonna to suggest to you some applications to share your information with. And you can use either Gmail, it's gonna attach that PDF to your Gmail and then you can edit your email. It's gonna start actually your Gmail account application and you can write an email, put that into your attachment. I can use my Google Drive, save it to a Google Drive somehow. I can save it to mine or I can save it to a shared Google Drive that uh, let's say teacher uh, gave me access to. I can use also Dropbox if I have it installed on my tablet. Okay, so I can use all these. So let's, um, for example, use a Google Drive. So I click on Google Drive and the application Google Drive will pop up and it's gonna ask me a couple of informations. So the title, the name of the, uh, the document that I wanna save, uh, which account I want to use, in which folder that I want to save it at. And then once you're done, again, I have that magnification gesture, I can triple tap and I can move around here in my screen. And then, oh, that's the save button. I can save that and it's saved automatically to my Google account or my Google Drive. So that's very powerful, especially in this situation we're in where everybody works uh, from home, everybody is, is attending classes uh, from home and you have to pass down information. That's a great way to share information. I see that there's a Q&A. I don't know if uh, we have a question or is there any other questions that uh, may have popped up? Yes, somebody's yeah. asking in the Q and A if we can give the list of the pre-installed apps. So there well, would sure, be I can show you. I can show you what's a pre-install apps, and if you go into the APH tool, if you if we take out the uh, Google Drive and the Chrome here, the first one would be the uh, Axe, the nearby Explorer Online. Uh, flip over faces, that's brand new from uh, 4.3 from Prodigy 4.3. So all the new Mad Connects will have this. Uh, but um, the old ones, right, it's not going to reinstall that. You're going to have to do it by yourself. Um, <clears throat> but since the beginning, Lockdown Pro, Dropbox, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint, Instapaper, Learning ILI, Bard Mobile, Amazon Kindle, SnapType, Slap, uh, Slash Top Classroom, Slash, uh, Splash Top Classroom is a, an application that you can use to share uh, your whiteboard, your intelligent whiteboard with, uh, with students. So that's, that's one of the ways that you can uh, let your student um, get access to your smart board. Uh, word wall, screen rotation control, because some of these applications are in portrait uh, uh, orientation and you'd like to have it all in landscape, that can help you do that. Ball Tapper and Kahoot. So these are kind of like the applications that are pre-installed on their Mat, Mat Connect. Okay, we have another question. How do you add a bookmark within the PDF books in the gallery? Okay, well, book, uh, bookmarks are not, um, they're not, not available yet in the gallery. Uh, it will not bring you to the page you were in, but if you know the page you were in, it will bring you to that in that page, it will bring you to the word where you were reading at. So if you if um, you remember where we were in the last book here, in my poll book, I was on the seventh page. It's gonna remind me that I was on the seventh page and I start reading on that page, it's gonna, it's gonna know that I was at that word where I was at. So if I start reading, it's gonna, it's gonna start reading where I was at. And you cannot add some more bookmarks unfortunately right now in the gallery but that's something that we can add in the in the roadmap moving forward okay you can keep on going we don't have any right. uh, more questions so far good so the next topic that i want to talk about is that 
Uh, since Prodigy only supports PDF and you can only import PDFs inside Prodigy, what's the best way to get other types of document inside Prodigy? Let's say I have a Word document. How would I import that to Prodigy in order to have my student use Prodigy because it's made for low vision, you have that big font, that nice big font, and it's well made and they know how to use it. So I'm going to show you a, a way and maybe I think that can maybe help you in your day-to-day -day and providing uh, information to your students. But what I'm gonna do is I, I'm gonna go again, use that APH toolbox with my Chrome application here, and I'm gonna start Chrome. And in my Chrome, well, that's my, my main web browser on my tablet, on my Mad Connect. But I, I'm already here uh, at the website that I, I wanted to show you. It's, uh, it's called online uh, dash convert.com. It's a free website uh, that you can use to convert uh, some files, some, some documents. So there's all kinds of formats here. But what I'm interested in right now is the document converter, which is the, uh, the second one here on the top, the first, the one that's in green right now. And if I tap on that, um, that, that drop down, I can convert documents to any kinds of documents that I want. I want. And in here, uh, I can select convert to PDF, okay? And then I can use that to convert, um, I don't know, an EPUB or a Word document to a PDF and then, in, and then use that to import it into Prodigy. Okay, so I'm gonna go and let's do an example. So right now I know that I have already on my tablet. So what I did before this webinar, um, I went into my Android, I went into my Google Drive, and I have downloaded a document, okay? So here I have a Word document that I can use, or no, and I'm, not, I'm not gonna use a Word document, let's use an EPUB here. So you guys better have some questions because this, uh, this EPUB uh, file has uh, about 100 pages. It's gonna take a couple of minutes to upload, but uh, what I did here is that, uh, just tap on those little three dots and you can you have an option of downloading that to your tablet and it's gonna download it to your tablet, okay? So that I did previously before the webinar, but I just did it again here. And then I'm gonna go back to my Prodigy, tap on my Chrome, and then I'm gonna choose my file here. I'm back into my uh, Chrome and then I'm gonna choose documents on here. And then here I have downloads. I'm gonna go into downloads and this is where my document was downloaded. My EPUB was downloaded right there. So it's Dracula right here. So I'm gonna click on my EPUB document and then it's gonna say, okay, I'm checking out that, uh, that file and I'm, gonna, I'm ready to convert. So I'm gonna start the conversion and then that's gonna convert it into a PDF, okay? And this, you can, you can use that on, a P, on, on, your, on your laptop. You don't have to do this on the Mad Connect. I'm doing it right now on my Mad Connect, but you can use a laptop to prepare all your documentation, your documentation for your students and have everything ready to share with them. So, um, so you see it already prompted me if I wanted to download my file. I already have my file downloaded. I'm gonna say anyways, I'm gonna download it anyways. Uh, and now I have it in my downloads folder on my tablet. Okay, and again, like I said, you can use your laptop, convert all your information that you want to convert, and then uh, share that through your Google Drive and then import it exactly like we did with my PO document. Okay, once I have, um, once I'm done converting, I will go back to my Prodigy, and then I'm gonna go here in my gallery, and I'm gonna go and tap on my settings on the top right, and I'm gonna choose this time, I'm gonna choose import, which is uh, the third, fourth option in my settings menu. Internal storage, it tells you what it is really, it's uh, the internal storage of the tablet. So I'm gonna tap on that. And if I scroll down, there is a folder, download folder here. So each time you download something from the internet on an Android device, it goes directly to your download folder. Okay, so don't ask why it's done like that. So go into your download. There's my books that I have downloaded already. I'm gonna choose one, which is my Dracula, and it's gonna start the conversion uh, in, inside my, my gallery. 
Okay. So, okay. Well, yeah. Well, word converting, uh, somebody's asking about the price of the Mat Connect. Jim, can you uh, chip in on this? Sure, I'd be happy to. Yeah, the, the cost of the Mat Connect is uh, twenty nine ninety five, and you're able to secure that with quota funds or without quota funds. Thank you, Jim. So, in quota funds, uh, so that's uh, that's uh, that's very good to mention. Uh, if you do have access to your quota funds, uh, this could be something very nice. The Mat Connect is a uh, an Android tablet, uh, which I showed you. I can undock from the state the the um, the base there it comes with a um, distance camera a Wi-Fi distance camera uh, that can be used with the Mac connect and uh, you can use it to do distance viewing either in a classroom a meeting room uh, some people also uh, I had some some person using it it was a, a senior using it and he was using it because he liked to watch his CNN and he was using it to see the little subtitles at the bottom of the screen so that's something that uh, that is very nice because it's wireless. You can put it somewhere in your house, in front of the TV. You could be sitting uh, on your sofa and reading uh, the CNN prompts on the TV. And the same thing for in a classroom. You have the students sitting at their desk, and you can put the distance camera anywhere in the classroom and to have a better view. So let's say he's in the back of the classroom. You can put the camera in the front so to get a better view of the, of the, uh, the whiteboard in front. And, uh, and then you have the image directly on the Mat Connect. So uh, the technology uh, on the Mat Connect is, uh, I'd say it's advanced, but also uh, it can be understood very quickly. Uh, nowadays students are, they have technology in their hands very early and they do understand tablets. They, if, even if it's not an Apple device, it works very similarly, similarly to a, an Apple device and they get adapted to it very quickly. And as soon as they get those technology in the hands of the students very early, uh, the better they're off in, in their career, in their studies, uh, more, more students will do higher, uh, higher studies, higher level up studies. And then when they get in the jobs and uh, the job market, they get uh, more, more higher paying jobs. And very useful in this uh, environment right now that we're in, like I said, working from home, can be difficult to share information, but this kind of technology is out there and uh, it makes it easier. And Nally has the first-hand experience with her daughter, which is visually impaired. And she's using uh, another product that we have at Humanware, which is the Reveal 16i. And she shares uh, a lot of information through it. Yeah, we're gonna go, we are going to do a demo on it, but we use Skype, so she has eye contact with uh, her tutor, and uh, we share documents, so her tutor sees the document that my daughter is using while she's working. <clears throat> so as you can see, it depends on the size of the book. It's, it could take a while to convert into Prodigy, and I'm not sure, I think I had the book already converted. And you can you can cancel your conversion anytime by hitting the little back button that you have hidden at the bottom of the screen. And yeah, I do have the book already imported. So you can click on here and you have the book imported. And like I said previously, the settings menu, and there's a go to page. So let's go to page uh, 50. It's gonna bring me to the page 50. I really chose a page at the end of my chapter here <laughs> and I can select, which is, which is a good example. I can select that and use a handwriting tool to write on it and take notes of my chapter. I can use also um, the virtual um, keyboard by selecting the T and then pressing and holding where I want the text and start writing my notes, sending it to the, to the page. And again, it's going to be saved on on that page in the book and you can refer that afterwards or you can share it also with uh, with a teacher or anybody in, in the class with you and there is also a possibility of connecting a physical keyboard you can connect a, a USB cable a cable keyboard with it or a Bluetooth uh, keyboard with um, with the Mac connect also I see that we have a question in the Q&A 
Yes, somebody's asking. Oh, that is a question. Uh, can we see or hear the page number when the document is being read, even if it's a, if it is enlarged? If there is a, a page number at the bottom, in this book, it's not really a good example, but if there is really a page number that is printed at the bottom, it will read that page number, yes. And if you have your speech on and you use the go to, uh, to navigate, just like I showed you, it's gonna read out that you're on page 51 on the gallery. Okay. Any more questions? Because I think we went through all of our learning objectives. Um, yeah, Eric, there's a, there's a question here um, that is asking, can you connect a laptop with join.me or the join.me app? So, yeah, and I, I think that we're referring to connecting the product or the, the Mat Connect tablet to a laptop through join.me. So, Absolutely. Yeah, you can use join.me, you can use TeamViewer, you can use VNC. These are all, uh, they're all applications that, that are used to share desktops. So you, you can use the uh, Mad Connect to do that. And to, do, to get those applications, you go into Android or go into the APH toolbox and, and add the Play Store. And the Play Store is right here. And you can search for all these applications. Uh, but I know join.me, I think they have an application in Android, but join.me also have it. It's a web, uh, web based app, uh, app also that you can, that you can use. But yes, uh, you download that, that application uh, that you want to use. See, I don't see the join.me. So I don't think they, they have a, an Android uh, application, but you can use it through uh, the Chrome uh, web browser. And you can, yes, absolutely connect your computer to the Mat Connect. And by the way, that's how you would share uh, your smart board to the Mat Connect, because a smart board is essentially a computer. So you would have uh, you would have the server on the um, you would have the server side on the um, on the whiteboard or the smart board, and then the client side on the uh, on the Mat Connect, or vice versa. So there's there's two sides to the, the server and the client. And that, that, that could be a good subject of another uh, webinar topic, uh, Jim. Yes, uh, yes, it could be, Eric, and we're working on that, aren't we? <laughs> we are. <laughs> um, so if there's no more uh, questions, I, I'm going to talk a bit about accessibility in Android. I think that was one of the questions this morning. And uh, I'd like to show a bit on how to, to activate uh, certain things in, in Android. When you go into the Android desktop, you can go into uh, my all applications here, which is a little circle with the uh, black dots at the bottom of the screen. And then go and select the settings, which is gonna bring you to, to your Android settings. And then in this list, you can scroll down and you'll have access to accessibility. Now accessibility in here, you have access to turning on or off TalkBack. And TalkBack, everybody knows about uh, VoiceOver, so this is your VoiceOver in Android, is TalkBack. So if I have that activated, I can use my gesture from left to right or right to left to move through the options in Android. Okay, and, and I can also pause it by, there's a shortcut, which is volume up and power, uh, power button for a couple of seconds. It will enable or disable the TalkBack. Uh, you can scroll down a bit and you'll have the magnification gestures uh, and that I like my preference would be to turn it on because then you can use that triple tap on the screen and you have that magnification that's done on any menu in Android. And also if uh, people would like to uh, use a, a Braille display, then you can download the, um, the Braille back uh, application from Android and you can connect your Braille display to the Mat Connect also. So that's a bit about accessibility. And again, Jim, that's another topic for another webinar. And uh, thank you very much. And again, uh, I really appreciate that uh, you've chosen this webinar and listen to me talk about the Mat Connect. It's my passion to get the technology in the hands of the people that need it. And um, please, if you have any questions, uh, you can direct uh, the, an email to myself or any support at APH and they know how to find me. And uh, a special thank you to Emily uh, from uh, Benetech that uh, joined us today. 
and it was a great presentation. I'm pretty sure that uh, people enjoyed also learning more about Bookshare. And Natalie, also the product manager for low vision devices at Humanware. Thank you very much. And Jim for receiving us at APH. Thank you very much. Guys, stay safe, stay at home, stay healthy. Have a great afternoon. See you next time.